Um, Joe, this is what Joe Biden said. This morning, I sent a letter to my fellow Democrats on Capitol Hill. In it, I shared my thoughts about this moment in our campaign. It's time we come together, move forward as a unified party and defeat Donald Trump. This is so fascinating to me because Joe Biden simply will not give up the presidency. I, and I think Jill about, is kind of making sure he won't yeah, give up. Um, she doesn't want to. No. Exactly. So her, his and side, his, his faction, his family are getting behind it. And on top of that, what's really interesting about this is we haven't seen the Democrats this divided since 2016, uh, you know, Trump versus Hillary, which is actually before that Hillary versus Biden. Sorry, Hillary versus Biden. Hillary versus Bernie. They they completely stacked it against Bernie, the mm. super delegates thing, and all of that. When I was I was rooting for Bernie at the time, I was a Bernie bro. I remember how they did that. It woke me up to the Democrat establishment. How are they going to get rid of a sitting president? This is actually how powerful the Constitution is and what they are passing. Yep. They can't just brush this guy away. Mm. Now George Clooney, one of the biggest yes. funders of Joe Biden, it was just announced today has withdrawn his support and he's encouraging Joe very openly and I mean pro privately to him I guess chiding him and saying look you, he did Joe, yeah time. op-ed he did an op-ed and right. was, and literally a month ago mm. one month ago he raised I believe 20, three weeks yeah <laughs> yeah 27 million dollars for him mm. now all of a sudden he's not suitable I don't want to be rude Joe has been like this since the 2020 elections. Mm. Yes, it's a little worse, yeah. Oh, yeah, but absolutely. not significantly. Yeah. And if he claims to be such a good friend, such a good supporter, knows him really well, how did you not see that first? Mm. If you really felt that, like you could see that happening, why did you just raise $27 million? Yeah. Mm. It's because they don't care. It's got nothing to do with Joe mm. as a suitable president. It's about winning mm. once that debate happened and they realized they couldn't win all that support dropped and that's really all it is they just want to win they don't care so much who's in who's at the top i mean obviously they do like they need someone that they that will follow their agenda and they can control and do what they want but if they get someone who's popular at the top then they're they're happy and it, like you said it creates a really interesting situation they can't get rid of him and they have the added problem mm. of kamala harris mm. as the vice president mm. you know if he drops dead if he pulls out or whatever she becomes the sitting president and she's not going to want to go either so that's going to create um even more problems yeah. Uh, and she's less popular than Joe is, which... And more mentally compromised. I mean, yeah. yeah. See, she is. Without the age. No, see, absolutely. See, um, what's so fascinating about this is we're so used to it being, oh, it was planned. Of course they planned. Mm. This was not planned. Yeah. There is no... Like, the, the level of foresight, they did not put a lot of foresight into this. Mm. And it shows because we're seeing them fight with each other. They're, no, they're normally, Look, you know, collectivists, I whereas think, it's the right that they're individualists. I think they suspected it. And I think that's why they p pushed the um, mm. the debate so far forward um, before they've got this co the conference coming up in um, August, mm. um, the caucus, sorry, in, in August. So I think they pushed it forward for this very reason because I think they were starting to become concerned. And I think they really put their foot in it with that. It, it's, as you said, it's just caused so many problems. They've just become so splintered and divided. Yeah. And I, I'm so curious. Like, I've never been huge on US politics. I mean, obviously, since I got involved, I keep an eye on it. I like to see what's going on. Mm. Um, but now I'm just, it's <laughs> like reality TV. I can't turn away. It is. They've painted themselves literally into a corner now. And I mean, I think nobody knows what, even hourly, like even as we're sitting here now, yeah. like, you know, four hours ago, there's a different, nobody knows how it's actually going to play out. And I don't think even they do. And yeah. they changed their heart like two days ago. They were like, oh, let's get rid of him. And then they were like, some of them came back and said, no, no, we'll actually, we're, we're going to back him. And it's uh, right now, even I think it was um, Nancy Pelosi came out this afternoon and said, 
you know, he has to pick his time, but he has to hurry up kind of thing. So they've, mm. you know, he said he thought he had until the weekend, but they're like yeah. saying. <laughs> they're running out of time because there's some states where he's going to miss the deadline to be yep. on the ballot. The ballot. And mm. that's bef that's in August. Well, that's, that's the before the actual. Do we know the date of the no, caucus? The court, look, so I think it's like the 9th or something. Yeah. Okay, because I think. Um, 19th, maybe. I think the party really needs to him out if they want to get rid of him before yeah. that to have any chance of getting anyone suitable because I yeah. think if it happens after that they're stuck with Kamala. But you know, do, you, do you think though that if yeah. they got him out do you think the public would go it would be even because what you were saying earlier you know how they just stitched up Bernie yeah, and they, they just swapped out and I think you know the question is is that more damaging just saying oh he's out and we're going to put another person in and you just have to accept this is the new person. I think know, that, is that, is yeah. that more of a risk than actually leaving him in? I think the damage has actually been done because mm. the public uh, and, and ha look, we we all knew about his cognitive mm. cognitive abilities because we watch the videos on on Twitter. But mm. but we're not normal people. You mean the deep fakes they're referring? Yeah, the deep to. fakes. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Well, one thing I will say, um, it's now been definitively proven that that is the real mm. Biden. It's not just a man in a mask. Um, because they would never pay someone to wear a mask to put on a performance like that. But um, no, the, I think people already are disillusioned because they've realised they've been lied to. Mm. You can't unsee it. Exactly. Yeah. But, but, but again, sort of just very importantly, behind all of that, a lot of people are now saying, wait a second, you guys were telling us not just two weeks ago that Biden is possibly the most physically robust president in American history. That, that's what the White House was saying. And now we find out, in actual fact, he's not, he, he, he's not actually able to uh, barely stand up and talk after 9 p.m. Like, you guys have been lying to the country. So I think actually a lot of the damage has been done. I think mm -hmm. trust in the Democratic Party has been lost. And if anyone votes Democrat, it's solely... Well, there, you've still got some true believers out there. They're incurable. That's fine. But I think a lot of people are just going to vote Democrat because they are genuinely afraid that Trump uh, is going to sort of overturn democracy. But I think the trust has already been lost. Mm. I just, it's, again, I'll say it one more time. It's astonishing to me. I'm learning so much. I'm taking inventory of all the things, all the levers they can pull on a sitting president. These people are that powerful. Yep. And I, I just said, you're getting me thinking in real time on this, guys, because obviously I've been looking at US politics in, for eight years now, since from the left, from the right. One of the things, maybe it was planned, and one of the things I'm reconsidering now is, do you remember back in 2020, I can't remember if they passed this, but do you remember there was a press conference, it's in my phone, where Nancy Pelosi was before the cameras, and she said, we're passing this bill to, make, to Im improve the protections on the 25th Amendment so that we can dismiss a, um, a president on his mental acuity. This isn't for Trump, she said. This isn't for Trump. This isn't meant to come in until after. Was it for Biden? Did they always know that was going to be needed in the future? Interesting, because the word on the street is that when he agreed to run as president, his ex his family and extended family were angry at him. Bec why? Because he had dementia. Mm. That's that's sort of the rumours, that in actual fact he didn't have a lot of... He had the support of Hunter, he had the support of Jill. But both for obvious reasons. She's very ambitious, and, and Hunter, well, he wants to stay out of prison as long as possible. <laughs> Um, and make a lot of money. And make a lot of money, that's right. Um, but look, he, the, the thing is, he's been choreographed and handled. So he, 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 is, he doesn't do interviews where he doesn't know the questions. Yep. Uh, he won't generally talk for more than 10 minutes. Of course, he, it's legendary now. He only really works between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. That debate was at 9 p.m., I think. So that was a big mistake. And now they can't just say, oh, can we bring the debate to you know, 12 p.m.? But you can't do that because you're tacitly saying that anything that happens in the world between, outside of those hours... You could hours, do what I used to do and have an afternoon nap. Maybe that's, that's a possibility. <laughs> I think what's happened is he's dug his... Well, not him, because I don't think he's really... You know, really he's stubborn. Not, but mm. his, his wife and son have gone you're not going, you're staying. And he's like, okay, we're staying. Um, but now they've said, I think they've basically said, if you don't kind of resign by the weekend or whatever, then there'll be a whistleblower that'll come up. You know that tape of him when they interviewed him, mm. which which Colin is not allowing to come out. There'll be something like that will come out, which will just be so bad. 
Yeah. They'll basically say, well, we'll just leak this on this year. Yes. That is very plausible. And that's yeah. what yeah. interests me. Yep. They've suppressed, there are videos of him saying the N word everywhere, <laughs> but they suppress, they suppress, say, that's what fascinates me. It's Censorship like. Censorship is wonderful. If yeah, they, they have it. Party. They have all the material ready to go. Yeah. They keep it suppressed, but if you stuff up, I will release it and I will amplify it and I will throw the algorithms behind this. It fascinates What's that going to do to the party? That's got, I mean, because people are going to see that and go, you had to have known. Yes, exactly. So it's it, going to break, it's going to red pill the nation. That's what yeah. the world, I mean, it's just fascinating to me. Yeah, I, I do think the dark horse is um, Michelle Obama, which CNN um, kindly termed Big Mike. I don't know if anyone saw that uh, clip, the, the guy. CNN. CNN. What happened? Yeah, he accidentally referring said, yeah. to yeah. referring yeah. to um, <laughs> brought up Pelosi yeah. and um, a couple of the other cans and goes Big Mike and he's gone. Oh my god! I, I didn't mean that. I meant Michelle Obama. No it way! It was hilarious. When, when, I made sure I saved that clip. It was. Oh. Not, it was after the debate. It was like only oh. a couple of days or maybe a no week idea. or so after the date. It was. <laughs> yeah, I've got. It's in my um, X feed. So. If you want to check it out, jump onto X, look up for the real King Elvis. It's in there somewhere. Um, just search Big Mike. But yeah, he actually <laughs> said it on CNN. I wow. was, I'm like, you can't be serious. This guy, he can't have a job after this. <laughs> that's right. Like, that's, the, that's the end of um, it. But I think that Michelle Obama is definitely a dark horse. And I think she could, because she keeps saying, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. Mm. And if something comes out where they have, you know, the, the red pill situation where they get rid of him and yeah. she goes, I have to step in. I, I don't want to do this. I'm doing this for my country. A bit like what Trump said at the debate, which yeah. I think is it could steal the thunder because he's done it now. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if she does it, Trump will be able to say he's just she's just copying me. Yeah. But I think that was one of the strongest points in 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 the debate is when he said, I would rather be at home. I yeah. don't want to be here, but I have to be. And I think that was one of the strongest moments. And I, I think if the Trump campaign was smart, they would be clipping the hell out of that and putting it all over um, the internet. Because when he said it, he seemed genuine. And I'm like, damn, you're not wrong. Like, mm. he doesn't need to do this. Mm. But he is. Mm. Some, some, yeah. people said, sorry, some people said that it's they're, they're, they're holding out <clears throat> because they don't want to give a lot of time for if Michelle Obama does it. Yes, there's scrutiny. A, there's, yeah, there's a lot of scrutiny. There's quite a bit of stuff out there. And so they want to leave it to the last moment. But, and, and then she said she doesn't want to, but who do you think would actually be, so maybe she will take up the mantle, get through the thing to try and win it, and then have some, uh, sorry, you know, medical, whatever, but bail out of it at some point, like just to, because mm. I mean, who else, well, I mean, there's Newsom, but what he's done to California, I was like, if anyone's smart, you don't want him yeah. anywhere near mm -hmm. um, the baggage. presidency. Yeah. There's um, obviously Pelosi. Uh, she's oh. obviously interested, but I don't think she's a smart choice. As Unelectable. Said, my, my, Bernie, my, my, my choice is the dark horse, the, the Michelle Obama. Mm -hmm. I, I believe there are a couple of others in the wings that are interested, but they, <laughs> I don't think they have the exposure or personality mm -hmm. to... to at the last second, step in and make a statement. So, yeah. like, like Joel said, this is this. I, I, I can't turn away. I just, yeah. I, yeah. I, I particularly the next couple of weeks until the caucus, I, I, it's going to be riveting because something has to happen. If it happens after then, it's going to be even messier. Mm, mm. And that's because yeah. if it happens after that, mm. it's it's Kamala. Yeah. But if it's Michelle, then we're going to see the Zucchini files, just like the X files. <laughs> so I couldn't help myself, guys. Sorry. But anyway, look, there's a whole bunch of dirt we're going to see come out in the next few weeks, months, and it's just going to it's going to accelerate from there. We and didn't even get into the lawfare stuff. Well, that's right. I think that that could be sort of Plan B, really, ramp up the lawfare, put him in prison. But that could actually raise his vote. It has. It already yeah. has. It's yeah. backfired astronomically. He's way more popular um, after his last yeah. um, conviction. He got the, the most amount of donations so far in his campaign. Yeah. Like, if they haven't realised lawfare is not working and it's not going to work, they're morons. Uh, yeah. Like, 
Sim- assassination. Mm. Yeah. No, that's well, heading to. It's, it's, yeah. it's seriously. Uh, that's yeah, that's where it's, it's heading. The last thing. It's well, heading that, to assassination. Yeah. Which, which brings up the VP side of things. So, but I guess maybe we leave this for another day. Yeah. That was but but whack them all. No, none of us would be remotely surprised if we woke up tomorrow morning and he'd been assassinated. No, that wouldn't no. be remotely surprising. Mm. I don't want to think about it. <laughs> this is why this is why I talk about this last because it's riveting, yeah. and it's going to keep getting crazier. I don't watch TV shows in 2020 or in 2016. This is an election year. This is what you can expect, and for some reason, the world loses its mind in the year. There are wars starting, which wouldn't start. There's elections on. You know, the UK and France weren't meant to have an election this year, but they both decided to do it early. I mean, this is nuts. Who knows? Albo might do it too. The, the, the really, yeah, true. The, the really dangerous thing about Trump, and everyone knows it, is that if he gets elected, he doesn't need to get re-elected. Mm. He's got nothing to lose. Mm. Yeah. He can go after all his enemies if he wants. Mm. And yeah. that would be very, very frightening well, to a lot of people. I think that's one reason Joe and um, the family don't want him elected yeah. because obviously, you know, Hunter's done a lot of stuff that is not pleasant i'll put it mm. simply and like i'm sure he'll be a target and we know that joe has um supported a lot of that so i think um i don't know whether he would i think he may just let it slide because mm. but the risk is too great for them mm. Mm. the obama you know um before the debate obama was involving himself in the campaign a lot more and then the debate happens and we know there's great fissures as Tucker Carlson tweeted, there are great fissures between the Obamas and the Bidens. It's always been like that. Mm. I can totally see Jill and, and Michelle punching on. And <laughs> Michelle um, would win, just yeah. for those wondering. <laughs> sword, sword fight. Um, CNN but, um, agrees. <laughs> yes. Um, but no, look, w- when I look at this, it, it is riveting. It's very interesting. It's going to get crazier. And watching the Democrats fight and b- not be unified, this is how they lost. Because mm. 10% of Bernie Sanders voters in 2016, people like me that supported Bernie, the people that could actually vote in America, never been to America, they voted for Trump, 10% of them, mm. that were going to support Bernie because of how he was screwed over by Hillary and how he was appealing to those swing states like Michigan. And and that's how he won them. And yeah. so... Um, I was yeah. a bit like you. I, support, I, I thought Ber- Bernie was the yeah. tr- good choice back then. Again, I, I had tend to have a lot more of a, a leftist view of things um, mm. politically. And I, I was thinking, I thought Bernie. And then when I saw that happen, I'm like, what the... What What's going on here? Yeah, he got a few extra houses. He um, stopped saying the millionaires and the billionaires, started saying the billionaires. And I was like, we were all like, oh, that's what happened. <laughs> Crazy right. Bernie. I thought Trump was a racist. I thought that that 2020, 2016 election, oh, I, I, was, I was depressed that day. I, I was, was really sad he lost. I wasn't he depressed, won. but I was, I, I was still like most people, you know, the orange man. Like, I, I was convinced by the media and like, I'm like, oh, you know, he, you're fired. You know, I've yeah. seen all his TV stuff and, mm. um, and I didn't dislike Trump either. Like, um, I actually, actually the first time I fought in the UFC was the, the Trump Taj Mahal. Ah. Uh, and I actually, um, oh. briefly met Trump obviously before then. And no he, he, this, he just did it like, just, by the way, by the way, <laughs> you bring this up right now at the end. Yeah. Well, that's a good Tell way us. to, it's a good way to, again, I, I was just, um, it was the first time I fought in the UFC and it was, as I said, it was in, um, yeah. the Trump Taj Mahal and, uh, you know, as part of it, like he was there and I, I met him briefly. I should say I was in the room. I didn't really, it's not like we conversed or anything. I, I, like, Cause you know what my question, next question would have been is, what did he say? I did. I didn't, how, how, big, I, how big are his hands? I didn't yeah. touch. Was that, him. How was he? <laughs> how, did you did you pull your trap when he did, did your handshake? Did uh, he pull you no, in? No, I didn't get any. Physical. Or did you do what Joe Rogan did, where I anchored in? And <laughs> have, you, have you seen that video? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't make any physical contact. Sadly, okay. I, I I regret it now. Right. Um. Right. But yeah, like I, I'd seen Trump. He seemed like a cool guy when I met him. Um. When he was there, he was see, quite pleasant, mm. happy guy and obviously he was um big as we know now is a big supporter of the ufc's at the events gets a lot of um support which brings up another point there's a lot of good to see a lot of the the fighters out there are, are aware of um what's going on like you know sean strickland one of the ex-champions um Mikano, who i think he's very much a libertarian and one of the ex-fighters jake shields so there's a lot of fighters out there that kind of um understand what's going on which is, which is also um good to see but when that election came, as you said, 
even though I'd met him, it seemed like a really nice guy, was very friendly. Even I'd been kind of tarnished by, by the media's perception of him as, as the orange man. Again, I wasn't as invested in it, so I wasn't fussed because I wasn't quite the, the same point as I am now politically. Mm. But I'm like, oh, well, they're in trouble now. And hindsight 2020, I, I realized that that was not the way it was at all. And, it, mm. and that's one of the things that made me realize just how much the media no longer do journalism. They don't present the news. They present a, a, a narrative. You know, they have a story to tell and they're telling you that. They're not telling you what's really going on. Mm. Absolutely. Guys, I'm conscious of your time. I'm going to quick fire these last few